So welcome back and we're going to have a look at what is needed to authorise a movement. So what is the authority that's required? Well, the first thing is a distance that can be travelled. That has to be from a known location. We also need to know the speed for the authority. And we also have to have other information about the route the train will be taking, such as the gradient, other restrictions, electrification and the like. So where do we start from? Well, we need to have an origin for any movement authority. In level one, that is the police group, which transmits the movement authority. But in levels two, three, or the future level R, it is the Belize group that has been reported by the onboard to the track side, often called the last relevant Belize group. The distance to go is from the origin to the end of authority. That is how far the train may travel. Sometimes it's easier to actually break the distance up into sections, particularly if the railway is divided into block sections. One section can represent from one marker to the next or one limit to the next. You can have up to five sections within a movement authority plus the end section. For speed, it can be just a simple speed profile. All trains travel at the same speed. Or there can be multiple profiles for different types of trains. And if there are more than one, then the onboard will compare all of the profiles to that which could be applicable for the train. It selects the combination of them. And the result is what's known as the most restrictive speed profile. And it's that which will be supervised. In another chat, we'll have a look at how speed profiles work. If you want to stop a train, you need to know how good the brakes will be. And the brakes in rate will be affected by the gradient. So the onboard needs to have information regarding the gradient for the whole of the movement authority. And that is in order to be able to supervise the end of authority correctly. There are many other things that can be included within a movement authority, often called track conditions. And information can include location of neutral sections or powerless sections. So this information can be displayed to the driver or the uh, control breakers can be opened automatically. If you're in a certain tunnels, there are only certain locations where it is safe to stop if you need to evacuate the train. This can be transmitted as well. Sometimes the driver needs to sound the horn and it's possible for the ETCS to display an icon reminding the driver of the correct location to do so. In levels two and three, ETCS relies on having data radio communication with the RBC. If there are areas where this data signal may be lost, then it is important to announce them in advance so that the system doesn't react to the loss of communication. Some trains have special brakes, like eddy current brakes, in which case they may only be applicable in certain locations. And if you're going through a long tunnel, it may be necessary to close the air vents on passenger coaches. In addition to the movement authority, a mode profile can be transmitted as well. The mode profile is used to tell the train, the onboard, how much supervision will be distributed between the system and the driver. In the absence of any mode profile, the onboard operates in full supervision. The driver has minimal responsibility for the safe movement of the train. But alternatively, a mode profile can instruct the onboard to operate in on-site mode for part or all of the movement authority, or to change the shunt mode at a specific position within the journey. So on level one, a movement authority is sent from a Belize group, and that becomes the reference. It contains a packet of information about the distance to go, the actual movement authority, and the onboard also needs to have received other packets, often in the same message, related to the gradient and the speed profile. For levels two, three, and R, the message comes from the RBC over the radio, and our reference is now the last relevant Belize group the last Belize group that was reported by the onboard. 
The message contains a packet about the distance to go, the actual movement authority, and also within the radio message, there will normally be other packets relating to the gradient and the speed information. Unless, of course, these have already been sent. And the key packet of information is the movement authority. And if you look in subset 26, chapter 7, you'll find its structure like this. <laughs>